If you're not living under a rock, you've probably heard recently about all of the controversy surrounding the stolen artwork with some of the new skins in the Revolution case. People have already shared their opinions on this very deeply, and TDMA Zeus actually made a great video on this subject, so if you don't have a basic understanding of this situation, I encourage you to go check his video out. This video is going to go ahead and give a quick summary of the situation, and then I also want to go ahead and just look at the history of contraband skins in CSGO because it's actually pretty interesting, and it even says a lot about CSGO investing. So we'll get right into that after a word from our sponsor, Skins Monkey. This video is sponsored by Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a website that you can take all of the skins that you don't want anymore and upgrade them into something pretty cool. Even if the item that you trade for is on a trade hold, it'll be added to your Skins Monkey backpack until it's ready to be withdrawn. When you use code NALO, there's actually two bonuses that you get on the site. The first one is an up to $5 bonus when trading skins, and the second one is an added 5% bonus when you're topping up your balance. And this is on top of the 30% bonus they already give you. And even if if you don't have any skins to trade, Skins Monkey actually has daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways that you can enter completely for free with a variety of ways to gain more entries. So check out this great site, Skins Monkey, by using my link in the description below for these extra bonuses. Now I want to begin this video by saying that these skins are not going to be made contraband, so anybody who's trying to push that narrative is absolutely wrong. The m 4 for Howl and the Howling Dawn sticker were a one-time thing. People state that Valve said they're not going to make any more contraband skins. Unfortunately, I don't have a source for that, couldn't find one. However, it seems to be a very shared narrative, so maybe it was from some random live stream or something like that. But no, the main reason these aren't going to become contraband is actually because of something that TD Zeus mentioned in his video as well, which is that the incentive that this creates is a really bad one. If people know that you can just steal artwork, upload it to the workshop, buy a whole bunch of the skin, and then it'll go contraband and you'll make a whole ton of money off of your hoard of the skin, that's not exactly a great precedent to set. So if anything, these skins will be sort of removed from the case and then they will be replaced with art reworks. Personally, for the Doodle lore, I'm hoping that they add the other Doodle lore, which in my opinion is a superior skin, and as for the M4A4, I just hope they don't mess up the waifu too much. But this kind of situation is not new information. If we take a look at history, we can actually also see that the M4A4 Griffin, for example, also had this same sort of air that this current situation has, where people are saying that the skin is going to get removed from the game and become contraband. The M4A4 Griffin ended up just having its artwork changed, and then a lot of people who invested in it became very sad. It's also worth noting that the M4A4 Griffin also had a DMCA takedown pushed onto it, which is the same sort of situation that is currently happening with the op doodle lore. So yeah, don't get your hopes up, I don't think either of these skins are going contraband anytime soon. I did want to say though a quick word to the artist of the M4A4. Come on man, the weeaboos have been waiting all the way since the Og Akiapura except for a new weeb gun. Why'd you have to be an artwork thief? Hopefully the rework doesn't butcher it too much. Also a note on the people who called out the artists on Twitter. I don't know man, it's kinda weird that you also happen to be workshop artists. I think that's a little bit odd, it seems a little salty in a way that there was so much effort put into trying to figure out if these artworks were stolen. I get that there's like a level of care you have to take and that it's important to give people credit for their artwork and stuff like that, but in some regard it does seem a little bit salty. I also find it odd with the whole contraband situation that people are trying to get them removed from the game in order to make money off of them when the people who are stealing the artwork are also trying to put them in the game to make money off of them. That whole dynamic seems really weird and backwards. I just don't know if anyone has the correct intentions behind this. But yes, as with all other situations where there was artwork stolen from somebody and a big contraband argument was brought up, the skins are never good investments. So if you are thinking about buying into one of these M4A4s or even the op doodle lore, it's not going Going to be a good idea. Your skin is just simply going to get replaced with whatever the replacement is, and you're going to lose money if you're trying to buy into them to invest. Also, the case is new, so the prices are already inflated, so just don't buy into these. Every prior precedent says you're just going to be losing money. Just like the recent summer sales, the contraband investing discussion is sort of a dud topic at this point. There's not really going to be any good investment result from it, so I think we as a community should come together and just kind of decide to end this. Now, moving on from this topic, though, there is one other topic that we do need to talk about, and that is the Rio sticker sale. The Rio sticker sale is still going on, even after this case has been released and this new update has been pushed. If this video wasn't enough to dissuade you from looking into Rio as a potential investment, I think this update keeping the Rio sticker sale going is even further proof that Rio is not necessarily going to be the best idea. We have Antwerp and Stockholm, which both have much, much better prospects for a long-term investment. And the other topic to talk about as well is the Clutch case. The Clutch case has actually been put into the rare drop pool, but interestingly enough, the Clutch case gloves, that's kind of a tongue twister not gonna lie, have actually been rehashed and put into the Revolution case. So the Clutch case is now not only the only place you can go to get these old gloves, however, it is actually in the rare drop pool. So if you're a 
a rare drop pool investor kind of guy, Clutch Case is a new option. I also briefly wanted to talk about the Aug Store Minimal Wear. You may have seen this on TikTok or on the Steam Market page because this thing has exploded in price. Now, unlike what CSGO Market Forum is trying to push for some reason, it is not just widespread fraud. There's probably a couple bad actors associated with this, but it's just sort of a meme. It's interesting to see what the CSGO community can do when they all come together, and it's also interesting to see what the CSGO community can do when they are individuals. But that's basically going to be your roundup for the overall happenings with the CSGO markets and investing over the past couple of weeks. And that's really all I have to say on these topics. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and taking time out of your day to come spend it with me. Be sure to go check out my Discord server and my Twitter down below. I have a lot of great resources on both of those places for you to get started on your investing journey or to advance it even further. Hope to see you guys supporting the next video and the shorts that I've been releasing. Make sure to subscribe to Nalo for the best CSGO investing content anywhere else on YouTube. See y'all next time. Peace.